for thine to set us free. We thank you that you are good, that your mercy endureth forever. Lead us, guide us, fill us with your spirit. We give you thanks, we give you thanks, we give you thanks, we give you thanks, we give you thanks. Because you are Lord. We give you thanks, we give you thanks, we give you thanks. For you are Lord of all. Okay, uh, welcome everybody. We're in uh, Hello. We're in Matthew 24. Uh, I've got Matt beside me and Rich over in Yarmouth. Mm -hmm. We are uh, we are in the the holy week, the triumphant week, and yet he's giving us a foreshadow of the things to come, uh, which um, people seem to concentrate on greatly. I want to know what's in the future. I want to know what's in the future, and um, the Lord Jesus kind of lays out some of those things. So we're in amplified here, and understand that amplified when they have brackets and stuff is a commentator by the authors about that passage. Um, but sometimes it's it's insightful and sometimes it's not. So uh, the stuff inside the brackets and, and parentheses and stuff is not scripture, but it is uh, explanation of the scripture. Yeah, the brackets are added by the authors. To, the parentheses are synonyms. They're sort of like uh, uh, dictionary editions or expansions so they're both embellishments of the of the text obviously um they also use uh italics and um caps here and there so they're these are just different embellishments of the uh of the text but underneath i mean the basic text is of course fairly literal compared to some of the other versions good morning so, buddy. Yeah, so we'll take we'll take what the authors uh, have for us, and uh, you know, discuss it. See if it's uh, if uh, it does help us understand. Uh, yeah. So yesterday we read through this entire chapter, which is the Olivet Discourse, um, and um, of course it begins with um, uh, Jesus. Uh, really, I think I think it really shocked the uh, disciples when he said. When they said, you know, aren't, aren't these, isn't this uh, temple model uh, uh, outstanding um, edifice, et cetera? And he said, of course, this is going to be all torn down, uh, which had to come to a shock. But anyway, by the time they walked over to the Mount of Olives, they were saying uh, in verse three, uh, the disciples came to him and said to him privately, now this is the, this is the inner circle of uh, disciples, John, um, Peter, um, his, uh, Jesus' brother James, and in this case, Andrew, who is Peter's brother, those four are considered the inner circle. Not, it's not Jesus' brother, the other James. What's that? This is the four that none Zemini. of them include. None of them include Jesus' biological brother. James, the brother, the son of Zebedee. Yeah, his brother. Yeah, yes, right. Uh, yeah, I guess I did imply this. Yes, this wasn't his brother James, right? It's not. It's uh, it's uh, the disciple James, James, first disciple. Yes. Uh, so anyway, they came to him and said, they asked him, tell us when these things, uh, the destruction of the temple, as the authors have put uh, in uh, brackets here, uh, when this is going to take place and what will be the sign of your coming? So there are really two questions here, um, the coming and the end, that is the completion or consummation of the age, uh, the current uh, order of things, so to speak. Yes. Um, Jesus answered. Verse four, be careful that no one misleads you, that is deceiving you and leading you into error. Okay, don't be led into error. Amen. Uh, for many will come in my name, misusing it and appropriating the strength of the name, which belongs to me. Interesting embellishment. They're saying, I am the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed, and they will mislead many. Okay. So one, one of the things that Jesus warns about is people will come around throughout the centuries, uh, I added that word, and say, I'm the Christ, follow me. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, and, but they're not. all the time. And it happens all the time. And it sure. happens in, uh, you know, in prominent places and in less than prominent places, but yeah. over and over and over and over again, yeah. people say, I am the Christ, I am the Messiah, follow yeah. me. And you'll be misled if you think that anyone but the Christ is the Christ. Um, and 
many will be misled. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Including, of course, the Roman emperor is uh, wants to be considered uh, a deity as well. So <laughs> you can start right there for them. Yeah. He, he has to. That's how it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he's not, they don't think he is a god. He has to kind of manifest <laughs> everything that unites Rome. Yeah. And that's, mm. that's what keeps them together. That's right. So, I mean, he is just going to the bathroom and eating breakfast and stuff. But, <laughs> and they don't even see him. They, they say that more people saw the resurrected Christ than ever saw the emperor. Wow. Because he's, oh. he's really a symbol. That's yeah. it. And he can't go out in, in the markets. He can't visit his friends. Everybody who sees him has to be because he might get old. You know? Yeah, right. So, yeah, so the first uh, issue from Jesus is first part of his response is don't be tricked. Don't be misled. Don't be uh, deceived. Of course, we know Satan's primary characteristic is deception. So, yeah, like, right yeah. up front, you know he's going to be entering into this. Okay. So, Matt, go ahead. Uh, this is just kind of, um, it's, it's just that, again, the whole 2,000 years, yeah. you know, and he's just, it's kind of look out for red flags. <laughs> That's right. Right. Verse six. Verse, uh, uh, right. Uh, you will continually hear uh, wars and rumors of wars. Okay, so that is not a sign because it is something that is going to happen throughout history. So don't regard that as a specific sign of the end of times. It's going to be with you until the end of time, yeah. uh, starting now. Well, it's been the way through all history. So. That's why it's not a particular, a, a specific sign of the end of the age, although certainly wars and rumors of wars will be characteristic of the end times as well. But see to it that you're not frightened, for those things must take place. But that is not yet the end of the age. For nation will rise against nation, Let's kingdom stop. against kingdom. Let's pause there at least. Um, so the world is terrified about wars and rumors of wars. But Jesus says, don't worry about that. Like, mm -hmm. like uh, Rich has quoted, there's only been a few hundred years in recorded history. There hasn't been a major war. And you just think, wow. And so wars are continually happening. And you can say, well, I'm not going to worry about that because I'm a Christian. But, but in reality, if you're in Israel now, or if you're in surrounding areas, being worried is part of your daily life. You just... Uh, they have cameras running that will show will show when missiles get launched in. They get 90 seconds to get to the bunker. And you just <laughs> think that is a terrifying way to live with a bomb constantly over your head. And yep. now uh, many nations have have uh, nuclear power that can reach the U.S., but they don't need to launch missiles. They can destroy a city with a backpack. I mean, it's just not. And yet Jesus says, don't be scared about these things. Mm. But the world is terrified of these things. And yeah. um, it's, all, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's not it's natural, natural life. You know, it, it, that's that's the nature of life. You know, the, of natural life, the flesh, of, we know this flesh is mortal. It's going to go the way of all flesh. Yes. Um, but we should be, I mean, Jesus is bringing us eternal life. So therefore, don't let the natural life supersede the gift of eternal life that Christ is uh, bringing to us. Amen. Good morning, Jeff. Welcome with us. Good morning. Um, so you'll continually hear of wars and rumors of wars, of course. But don't be frightened, for these are not the, the end of all things. These are, these will take place. And right. yet, not even the end of the age. Okay, now seven. Yeah. Yeah, uh, seven, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. But all these things are merely the beginning of birth pangs, of the intolerable anguish and the time of unprecedented trouble. So we think about famines and earthquakes are now more obvious than any time in history. Now, I just say more obvious because obviously there's, 8 billion people or some number like that on the planet. And there's more famine because there's more famine and there's more earthquakes because some of the things that we're doing to the earth um, 
including some of these generators and things. But anyway, um, no. so we're seeing um, there there are actually apps that'll tell you when an earthquake just happened, <laughs> and yeah. it will you will notice. Okay, there was a five seven, there was a four two, there was a seven six, ah, and you just think, you know, and earthquakes are happening more vigorously. I believe. I really believe that's true. But we also have better records of recording it. Like in the 1800s, if there was an earthquake 40 miles away from you, you might feel a slight tremor, but you didn't know about it, and you didn't. But now it's on, you know, Fox News and CNN. Oh, there was an earthquake, and then, and then there's not. So you don't really. What he really is talking about is um, that the fall of the. You understand that the reason why empires fall is because they run out of steam. Yeah, like a psychological process occurs, and then Rome just doesn't work. So yeah. Rome just goes poof. And he's kind of like, what's happening now is that we've run out of steam. <laughs> but you're talking about billions of people, mm -hmm. right? And then the core of the world just losing their core, losing their core beliefs. That's right. Psychologically, mm -hmm. what he's describing, you you can't even really comprehend it. How how much pain there is in the world right okay. now, how lost people are. They, are. they can't turn to Christ. So there's, mm -hmm. there's nothing up there. They're, 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 there's nothing. They're just reeling. Mm -hmm. They're reeling. Yeah. And, and that's, the real, that's the real thing. Like billions of people utterly lost. Yeah. Like yep. just, I mean, the things they're feeling, the things that are, the things that they'll do. Essentially, was just a glimmer of what can happen. Mm. Oh, the, the specter. If if people don't have Christ, right, and like we do, and it's like for me, it's like none of this matters. I don't care. I can mm. live my remaining decades, and then we're on to the next stage. But for yeah. people like this, they're like they they're hyper focused on their own safety, and they're 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 in yeah. fear. That's right. And they're going to act out something in the real world that will kind of reflect their inner state so if they if they don't if their inner world is not at peace their outer world is going to have to be forced into peace and it's going to be a manifestation like the soviet union or like hitler yep. so that's mm -hmm. that we need the world to make sense because it's so frightening and i'm in so much trouble and it's just so horrible that's right and you've never seen it on a scale like you've seen it like can happen today that's right. It's just so huge, and there's so many people, and it can happen in an instant. I think with the tech, yeah. it's pretty wow. amazing. The gospel is going forth to every every nation, but not to every ethnic yet. And so you, mm -hmm. and the gospel is showing up in dreams in places where the missionaries can't go. Um, amazing time for revival. The the mm -hmm. church the church blockaded. I mean. Underground revival in China is mind-boggling. It is mind-boggling. Uh, underground <laughs> revival in Pakistan and some of these places yeah. where it's just flat out unsafe to be a believer, it just takes your breath away. And of course, mm. we're sometimes paying for their for their belief with their life. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the beginnings of birth pangs. Birth pangs are birth pangs that have that get harder and closer together and more painful. And when Kathy had birth pangs, we were convinced that the baby was ready. No, nah, you're not even close. Go back home. Mm -hmm. Wait a second, <laughs> she's in pain. We gotta have a baby. No, go back. It's gotta be now, doc. It's gotta be now. No, <laughs> it's not. Like, yeah. was, the doctor was really, okay. How much is she dilated? Okay. Don't worry about it. You're, you're not even close. What do you mean? I'm not even close. And so that same kind of angst about, you know, we got to be at the end times because of this. Uh, yeah. But you can't look at it's a pattern. Yeah. Like this has happened again and again and again. Yeah. Societies are eyes and fall. Empires are eyes and fall. So he's talking about Rome and he's talking about now. Yeah. But it's uh, the same processes. It's uh, what, what, a babble. We build a Babylon. We build a globalized kind of networked thing. Yeah. And then it just kind of like everything that makes it work.
work that the people kind of move on in their minds and it just collapses. And so th that's this time it's it's just it's bigger than it's ever been yes. at this point in history. It's and it's also more, more recorded and more connected because of the internet and all that. Yeah, there's no, it's going to be a global phenomenon. Yes. There's no, it's not like Rome falls and China doesn't care. Yeah. This time it's everything's connected. There's nowhere else to go. That's right. They'll yep. over to endure tribulation and you'll be put to death and you'll be hated by all nations because of my name. How amazing that was in the first century and how amazing that was in the second century and how amazing that is in this century that as we stand up for nation for Jesus we get hated um, now sometimes I get hated because I say stupid stuff um, sometimes I get hated and I would love to blame the gospel for it oh they hate me because of the gospel no they hate you because you spoke like an idiot um, yeah but because we love Jesus there is hatred for us and there are people that are offended by us because um, because we love Jesus and because they choose not to love Jesus, they choose to either be indifferent or hate him. Um, so they have a different solution for everybody's <laughs> problems. There you go, which involves, okay. Death, just suffering, <laughs> pain. That's right. Yeah. And you'll be hated by all nations because of my name, verse 10. Verse 10, at that time, many will be offended and repelled by their association with me and will fall away from the one whom they should trust. So this fall away, this is, the, this is a reference to the uh, apo uh, apostasy yes. that, that uh, is predicted to occur right here. Um, they fall away from one they should trust and will betray one another handing over believers to their persecutors and will hate one another. Okay. And that were, I think the, uh, let's see, yeah, many false witnesses at that time be offended. Okay. Uh, let's see, the law, oh yeah, the verse, next verse, or well, let's say false prophets will, will appear and mislead many because lawlessness is increased, the love, and the, the word there is agape of most people will grow cold. So the, he's talking about Christians there. That's right. So one of the signs of the times is that Christians hating each other or Christians falling away from their faith and, and working and working mm. vigorously to destroy the faith. Um, mm. That's how that paragraph reads. So one of the signs of the times is that people who are Christians will fall away from their faith and turn into haters and betrayers rather than agape heirs rather than people who love yeah well think things are going bad to worse, bad from bad to worse for everyone it depends what your starting point is if you're already at my um have um animosity against christianity then you're going to go to all out hatred if you're already a christian you turn cold in other words those acts of agape that you might have otherwise done you're not going to do now um because you just don't have the love you once had you, have, you start thinking about self-preservation and things. You're putting your energy into that rather than those acts of agape that you would have done if things were uh, times were a little bit better. You, know, um, you have to be very, very, very much in the spirit yes. to, to, to act like Christ does, where we yeah. he doesn't even date you. Yeah. I, I yeah. can imagine, yeah, the people who kind of like, yeah, just, yeah, yeah it just makes sense. Like a large percentage of people, when they get stung, they're going to kind of pull back. That's right. Yeah. So, 13. Mm -hmm. 13. Um, but the one who endures and bears up under suffering to the end will be saved. So, this is it. It's an enduro, it's a marathon. Yeah. Um, and uh, you have to keep your eyes on the prize. That means keeping your eyes elevated because if, if you keep looking at the world, it's going to drag you down. It's very key. It's very key. You, you have to, the language they use. And mm -hmm. it, the sense of it and the scale of the world, you could, it's just, you really, you, <clears throat> you can't have anything to do with it. Amen. You can't. Yeah. I think you should really just like kind of learn about the world through other people, like YouTube and stuff. You really shouldn't directly interface with any of these things because mm -hmm. it's straight on evil. 
That's right. It it, it just goes. It, they, everybody just throws off the pretenses because it's, there's something needs to be done. Yeah. We need. There's a feeling that something needs to happen. Yeah. It's kind of telling you the outline of what it's going to be, and it's going to be very, very bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, a, it's the environment that the uh, 144,000 are going to be operating in. Um, Jewish evangelists in a in a world that is absolutely shows no sign of hope. Yeah. Uh, against that backdrop, there will be people that were saying, "There's got to be something else." And when they hear the message in that context, they will turn. That's right. And there will be many, many salvations. But uh, it's <laughs> this is the final hurrah, the last hurrah. <laughs> and we have a great multitude of martyrs surrounding the throne in Revelation. A great multitude. The number is um, yeah, millions, it, millions yeah. in Africa alone. Yeah, there'll be a great number of martyrs uh, uh, surrounding the throne. A great crowd of martyrs. Okay. Yeah. This is the good news of the kingdom will be preached throughout the world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end of the age will come. Yeah. Okay. It's a testimony to all nations, right? That's right. There is such a thing as good news. Forget not. <laughs> yeah. It's the, the 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 king has triumphed, right? That's that's what it is. It's about. Yeah, yeah. there will be better times. So we have two things happen simultaneously. Things are getting bad. False prophets show up. People grow cold because of the persecution, and still the gospel goes forth to the all nations. Right. Actually, the gospel has gone forth now, like I just said, to all nations. But not to all tribes, not yeah. to all tribes. people groups. There's places, there's places in the world where this tribe and the one on the other side of the mountain have been war years, and this tribe may get saved and then take the gospel over the mountain to to their enemies. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. That's right? why I like uh, that's why I like Jesus Film Projects. One of my favorite uh, missionary yeah. groups that takes the takes the film, you know, the, the life of Jesus, life of Christ. Even without a soundtrack, with no soundtrack, and they'll go into places and have never heard of him or the gospel or anything else, and just play the movie. And the 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 reaction you could obviously some people just fall away in confusion, but so many people are teary eyed and and just they understand what's going on even without the language, and that, the language. that they turn that want to know what's what is this story really about and how do I. You know how do I drill down on this to get a piece of it for myself? We have, and uh, it's a it's a wonderful thing. They and they, um, you know, like the uh, the White Cliffs and these other people that do Bible translations. Uh, that that's the front line. That's the that's the cutting edge of uh, of missionary work, obviously, and, and evangelism. That's good. When we we put out a backpack, they get everybody gets a Bible or a New Testament or a Gospel of John, and they get the Jesus movie card. And with the Jesus movie card, there's a QR code on it that they can watch the Jesus movie literally in any any part of the world that has an internet connection. Yeah, How cool yeah it's that? available obviously in multiple languages, but uh, they do it even without a soundtrack. <laughs> they, they, anyway. So how glorious this is and how exhausting this is and mm. how how it looks so much like we're in these birth pangs before the the end of time, and we will we will continue to drill down on Matthew 24 in the days coming. Right. Lord, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for the prophecy that sits in front of us. We thank you for how how uh, amazing these times are, and how we're watching things get fulfilled that have never been fulfilled before, and we're also watching things that have been fulfilled uh, every generation. Transform. Yeah. Us, O Lord, so we can make a difference in this desperate and dying world. In Christ's name, amen. Yes, Lord, thank you. Thank you again for this uh, timeless message that, that actually becomes all the more relevant and all the, all the more uh, time fulfilling as uh, we, the time advances, that uh, things are falling into place and we can see this come together and that, it, for giving us a structure for perceiving these things that so many lack that uh, look out and see nothing but chaos. But we can see your plan, your order of things and the grand scheme and beyond it all, 
that there is that great hope of being with you uh, that's still out there, the door is still open and the, and the invitation going forth. Uh, it, it's, it's just a wonderful thing. And uh, thank you for it. We pray for your continued guidance that we might uh, live lives that uh, fulfill your purposes and bring glory to you in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Uh, dear Lord, thank you for coming to earth and saving us. And thank you for coming again. And you saved us from slavery, slavery to sin, slavery to death. And this time you will save us from slavery, from tyranny. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, trying to make the world kind of fit to make it answer the problems in our hearts when you are the answer to the problems in our hearts. So that will be made abundantly clear when they catastrophically fail to solve things on their own. But we know that this is just the manifestation of what is deeply wrong with us, has been wrong with us since the beginning. And we think that this time it will be undeniable that Christ is the way forward into a second age. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Blessings to you all. Amen.